But welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church for this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Typically, this is known as the uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. Our texts are going to include uh, Jesus uh, calling those folks to uh, come through the gate that he is to the sheepfold. And also Psalm 23 is going to be uh, our featured psalm for the day. Uh, we want to uh, lift up that uh, there is a new website uh, available. If you would like to go to calvarygb.com, uh, it has all sorts of information. We'll be posting again on there the latest uh, announcements that we have, as well as um, a week from today on uh, Mother's Day, we are having a drive-by Mother's Day gathering and encourage you to come. Uh, we put out uh, the word that um, we want to celebrate all the women who have uh, given of themselves for the nurturing of others. And so as you come, uh, we will have, uh, we haven't figured out quite yet how we're going to do this, but cupcakes for everyone who comes by. Uh, one of our families here has graciously uh, offered to make those. So we'll have hundreds upon hundreds and uh, hope to see you on that day. We'll be doing it in a safe way uh, so that uh, we don't infect anybody, but um, encourage you to plan. It'll be from 10 to 11 o'clock on Mother's Day morning. Uh, that is the 10th of May. Great news in that uh, our food pantry is fully uh, stocked. And so if you know of folks who are in food crisis or shortage or have found themselves out of work, uh, send them here. We've got fresh food as well as our regular uh, dry goods that uh, we're handing out and have that in abundance. Uh, so welcome this day for worship. We will now continue uh, with our celebration of baptism. And so if you'll uh, turn your direction to the screen for the words, and also for Pastor Rufus as he is gathered at the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning of your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water in your word you claim us, as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in each of us the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. Amen. Please join in singing our opening hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, based on the 23rd Psalm. <laughs> Green, he leads. 
O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me, he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely and goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel this day is from John chapter 10. Now Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the shepherd hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Now Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, so far, as uh, you've heard these texts, even as we sang a rendition of Psalm 23, uh, all, of, all of this is fairly familiar. Good Shepherd Sunday is one of those Sundays when we sit back and we realize there is a tender, strong, and caring presence in our lives. Where Jesus says, I am that one. We have from the Gospel text in John, Jesus says, I'm the gate by which the sheep enter the safety of the sheepfold. And so he's that one that says, you know, through me, you can come and find strength and you can fum, come and find, find safety. And even says the sheep know his voice. And so they follow him. And then we hear one of, we already heard one of the most reassuring of all the Psalms, Psalm 23, comforting uh, those that are listening um, and it's a way of David saying to his people and to his time of worship, the Lord is the one that he calls on and relies on. There's, there's a um, commonality and there's a familiarity with the Lord being in his life. If I start, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Most of you probably can't finish the rest of the psalm by memory. But as I was reading these texts, as I read this psalm and this gospel reading, I, I realized they sounded very different to me this time around. You see, I've never read them during a global pandemic. Never read them when I was living in, in many ways, quite a bit of isolation. And I have to tell you, I heard something very new in these texts, especially in our first reading, the reading from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 isn't so much a text of proclamation, it's a text of, of sharing, it's a text of teaching, it's a text of some very practical things that happen in our lives. And to be fair, Acts chapter 2 is also for many congregations their purpose statement of who they are. So many pastors will talk about, and, and many congregations as well, will talk about that they are an Acts chapter 2 kind of church. Because in many ways, they follow the intention of the entire book of Acts. It's about what the early church did. And so for us, it's about what the church today is doing. And there are some very simple things in there that always, when we come back to chapter 2 of Acts, we're reminded of who we are as God's people. We're focused 
on working with others. We're focused on reaching out to others. Acts chapter 2 was written in the aftermath of the resurrection, one of the oldest books in the New Testament. One of the very practical uh, roadmaps to how did the church work with each other and what did those earliest followers do in a time of confusion, in a time of fear. The Roman Empire had worked uh, with the other uh, structures of the time to try to stomp out the movement that Jesus had created. People were living in fear. They were hiding in their homes. They were afraid of what was coming next. And they were trying to figure out now how do we be faithful? To what we have learned through Jesus Christ. And so, in some ways, we too, living in uh, the aftermath of the celebration of Easter, hiding in our homes for our safety, not so much just for our own safety, but for the safety of others, trying to keep a virus uh, at bay that uh, we can't see and don't know where it's going and how it will impact each other. Uh, folks have talked about their own anxiety and their own fear of, my goodness, what's going to come next? We're being tested. We're being challenged at the very core of who we are. And so we're also learning new ways of living together. We're starting to understand that what we're living with is probably what many people have been living with every day of their lives. Living with fear, with struggle, with doubt. Uh, wondering if there's going to be enough food to go around for everybody, if there is enough masks and hand sanitizer to cle keep people clean and safe and germ-free, uh, to put uh, illness at bay. And in this process, what has happened is that our eyes have been opened to how so much of the rest of the world lives on a day-by-day -day basis. Those things like Ebola and malaria, those things that are so far away, or SARS from just a few years back, um, are no longer things that other people get. The virus we're all living with is now um, with people that we know. Four different people that I know, some in Minnesota, two in Wisconsin, are testing positive and living with uh, various degrees of illness. And so it's not something far off, it's something uh, very much in our lives. And we stop and we wonder, well, what do we do? How do we live as God's people? So look closely at Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Three simple things of what the early church did. It says in verse 42, they devoted themselves to teaching, and that's kind of what I'm doing here, uh, and a fellowship, and to the breaking of the bread. So let's start with fellowship. During this past week, I was involved in four different gatherings. In those gatherings, we had over 75 people participating. Gatherings where we could see each other, where we could laugh, where we could talk, where we prayed. We even listened to some live music uh, in those gatherings. All those gatherings were online, but nonetheless, it was good to see others. It was good to hear from them to share some of their struggles and some of their joys as well. People were overjoyed to be connected again, even if it was just through a computer screen or a telephone screen. They could see each other and know, yes, we're all still there. We've always been there. And God is still with us. So in verse 42, it goes on and it says, they broke bread together. And one of the things that almost in every one of those gatherings somebody shared was how they're eating together. Breaking bread together is different than uh, going to a drive through and shoving something down so you can get to the next activity. Breaking bread together is where you prepare the meal, where you receive the meal, where you share the meal, and you share of what has happened with you. And you share with what has happened with the people that are gathered there as well. And so my wife and I have talked about how we share meals. It's a respite at the end of the day of trying to make things work in a very new and different place and time. During this past week, as I was reading this text, I got an email from the new community shelter. 
uh, the shelter that uh, we've been so intimately involved with through the years, where we send people, where we provide food, where we serve food, where we share of ourselves with each other. And they talked about how they're still feeding people, but it's very different now without all the others connecting with them and without all the homemade food that uh, so many folks had gotten used to. And so in their breaking of the bread, they've realized they're missing some of the community. Whereas I think for many of us, in our breaking of the bread, or in our online gatherings, in our daily life, we're missing that community that is so precious to us. And what uh, Joy and I have realized is we're starting to see the world with a new set of eyes. Because we've realized that for many people, they've never had that community. They've never had that stability of a place to eat or a home to live in and stay safe in. So as you go a little bit further in Acts chapter 2, there is a unique verse that um, uh, when I was first a pastor, some people struggled with mightily. And we had a whole Bible study on verse 45 that lasted for three weeks. They sold their possessions and gave what they had to those who were in need. Now, when I was first a pastor, I was out in rural Nebraska. And the farms that those people lived on were worth millions and were acres upon acres, sometimes a thousand acres at a time. And they struggled with how, if we sell our possessions, will anybody get fed? And how about our ancestors who passed this on to us? What is our stewardship of all that? Well, let me tell you. Two weeks ago, Pastor Rufus and I put together a short video. He drugged me into the food pantry and said, we need to do something about this. And in our food pantry, literally, you could see the bare shelves. And so we put that out on Facebook. And now, if you look into our food pantry, you can't see the shelves. They are stuffed full of food. Dozens upon dozens of people went out of their way and gave away something, sold their possessions so that they could provide food for the food pantry, which means they could provide food for those who were hungry and those who were in need. And now our food pantry is stocked full. Others sold their possessions by making masks. Little scraps of cloth, that were going to be quilts or going to be blankets or going to maybe even be clothes are now face masks. Some folks have even brought dozens upon dozens of those here to the church and said, hey, if you find anybody who needs them, uh, you can give them these. I've made some and I'm going to make more. I mentioned in the opening announcements that we thought on Mother's Day, we need to do a drive-by again a celebration of those who give of themselves for the lives of others. We thought, let's make little mini cupcakes or find those. Let's check out where we can get hundreds upon hundreds. And as we made some phone calls, one of our families said, I'll just make them, all of them. My family will make this our project and our way of giving. And so they're planning on providing 300 cupcakes. And others don't do cupcakes or masks or couldn't get to supply the food pantry or making phone calls, sending cards, praying with others over the phone, lifting them up in their daily devotions. You see what we know about Good Shepherd Sunday is Jesus was saying, come to me all you who are weary, I will give you rest and I will give you what you need to give rest to another. To be that one that feeds the hungry, tends to those with no clothing or a place to live or safety in their lives. Somehow, in the midst of all of this virus stuff, our eyes have been opened. And we see what the shepherd has given us in a very new way. The shepherd's been showing us for years upon years. And I don't know about you, but I often was too busy to see the sheep that were lost and wandering. 
And now in these days when it's hard to see anybody at all, my eyes are open to the hungry, to the homeless, to the hurting, and to the lost and those who are struggling. We as a community of faith have been taught by the shepherd how to feed the sheep. And so in the aftermath of Christmas, in the aftermath of Easter, in the aftermath of the virus, we've learned God is a giving, loving God with an abundance for all of us so that that abundance can be given to those who are seeking. So may God bless you in this week to come. May your eyes be open and may you know how the shepherd has fed you to feed another. Amen. Our hymn of the day, number 789, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Please join me in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the resurrection, we join the people of God in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, we praise you for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to have all people know the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We can be fearful and anxious because of all that is beyond our control. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by disease and overwhelmed with suffering. Lift the spirits of our healthcare workers and grocery workers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, bless advocacy work, food pantries, feeding ministries in our congregation. May none of our labors lack basic needs. We thank you for the faithful witness of your people. And now we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you for the offering. Thank you for the music. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for the offering today. Those that are able to give online and those that being able to mail in that offering, we thank you. We pray that you bless everyone. Our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration but you make of them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of our raising Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God At this time, watching from home, if you would like to take 
bread or wafer, please feel free to do so. Your wine or juice, please free to do so. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. People of God, standing or sitting, let's pray as Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is a kingdom and a power and a glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready, and all are welcome to partake. So if you are home, please join us at this time. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ shared for you. Take and drink. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Like living God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the one who brought forth Christ from the dead Raise you to new life, filled with hope, and turn our mourning into dancing. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
But let us go in peace now to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.